Hello, my name is Françoise Moudoute and I am the CEO of the African Women's Development Fund. I joined AWDF very recently and for the first six weeks I have had the absolute privilege to work alongside the outgoing CEO, Theo Sowa, and we've had so many beautiful conversations. We have learned, we have shared, we have laughed quite a bit. And now we wanted to share one of these conversations as we close the office today and we're also closing a very important chapter of this organization's life. We wanted to share a snippet of our conversations. So Theo and I sat in the beautiful resource center of AWDF here in Accra and we spoke. I interviewed her and I asked her questions about her life at AWDF, the lessons uh, that she's learned and her dreams for the future. Have a listen. Good morning, Theo. This is the day before we're not going to see you in the office as much. And I was thinking this morning, nine years. How amazing the growth for you, for the organization. When you think back, what are you proudest of when you look back at the nine years you spent at AWT? It's a really hard question because actually there's so many things I'm proud of. I think the things I'm proudest of were the times when we were brave. Because it can be really hard as an emerging organization to take some decisions. And AWDF, from the time it was established, actually has always done that. You know, BC, Joanna and Hilda, when they set up the organization, they were brave. They were pushing boundaries. There was no regional women's fund. And they took that decision to raise the money, to set up the organization, to set up the networks. And so when I think of my time at AWDF, the times I'm proudest of are the times when the staff, because it is a team that does all this, has made the brave decisions. It's the times when we've walked away from money because we felt that the conditions were wrong and didn't fit our values and our principles. It's the times when we've done the things that no one else has done. You know, at the moment, lots of people are talking about futures this and futures that, but when we made a decision to have a strategic plan based on futures, no one had done it before, neither had we. <laughs> we didn't even know how it would work or if it would work. And so it was a brave decision. I think that when we made linkages across the world and were prepared to use those linkages to push our core feminist agendas further, that was brave. So those things, those are the things that I'm really proud of. And then finally, just the team itself. I'm really proud of the fact that we are not a perfect team. We are not a perfect organization. But I think we always try. And I'm really proud of those moments when our team members have stood up for each other, have been there when a team member's going through bad times, have been there to support, have had each other's backs. That makes me proud. That's beautiful and indeed everybody has been telling me about the sisterhood, the strength of the sisterhood in this organization. It's quite quite amazing. I've only been here a few weeks but I can I can already feel. So let's talk about 2020. Uh, what a year it has been in so so many ways. And what a year to transition. Uh, how has it felt like for you? Uh, for you as an individual but also for you as a leader and for you as an outgoing leader of this organization. 2020 has been fascinating, actually, because it's a year that gives us an opportunity to break old habits. It's a year that gives us an opportunity to think in different ways. And it would be so much better if we weren't forced into that. So 2020, one of the overwhelming things is that it has been exhausting. It's been exhausting for the team. It's been exhausting for individuals. We've had to relook at our family lives, our work lives. At AWDF, we've moved from being an organization that works from an office 
into an organization that works virtually. And we had to make that change in a matter of weeks. So it has been exhausting for everyone, but it's also been a little bit inspiring. It's been fantastic to watch the team and see how people have stepped up to the plate. It's been really great to see when everyone realized how tired everyone was and how stressed women's rights organizations on the continent were that our team listened to what our partners were saying. And when one of our coaches came up and said, you know what, women leaders are really struggling, the, the team could come up and say, okay, we're gonna do some sister to sister conversations. We're gonna look at emotional resilience. It's not the whole picture, but it's a start. And so 2020, despite the exhaustion, despite the fear, because people were scared for their lives. And it, that's really hard to work through. But despite that, or maybe because of the fact that African women have been scared for their lives so many times in our history, whether we're talking Ebola or HIV AIDS or floods or droughts or anything else, maybe that's what gives us the resilience. And so, for me, it's actually been inspiring to see how women's rights organizations and activists have just stepped up and they have dealt with COVID in the same way that they have dealt with other challenges in, the, in their lives and in our African histories. But it doesn't mean that it wasn't a really, really tough year. And I just hope that we have a springboard now that we can say, okay, some of this we have under control. Now we're really going to open our minds. We're not going to go back to the way we were. And when people say build back better, you know, I'm hoping that we're going to build better because the back was not very good for most of us or for many of us. Absolutely. That's what everybody has been saying about the new normal. And what does that even mean? And the old normal was awful. Yes. So yes, absolutely, completely hear you. So looking forward and at, uh, at building the better, uh, we, what do you think uh, you would absolutely love to see happen for women's rights in Africa? And what do you think AWGF's role in the future should be in building better? Two or three things that I would like to see. First of all, I would really like to see the world stop looking at us as victims and start acknowledging our agency. African women that I have known are astounding. I am not saying that we're all perfect. We're absolutely not perfect. And we're all incredibly different and nuanced. So actually sometimes even speaking about African women or African women's rights feels like such a brushing over of who we are because we're so much more. But ultimately, I really would like to see much more of the world understanding how powerful, how strong, what amazing change makers African women are. Because then maybe the systems that exist that stop us reaching our potential, maybe it'll be easier to break those systems down, to actually come up with systems that allow us our potential and our growth. So for African women's rights, I want to see more of our amazing African women, our African women with an agenda, with progressive agendas, with agendas that speak to change for the whole of our continent, but actually for the whole of the world. I want to see more visibility for them, more visibility for the agendas and a greater capacity to impact. And that capacity isn't about the African women. That capacity is about all those ceilings, all those walls that block us in. Capacity is about breaking down those walls. So I'd love to see that. And I'd really like to see, or an indicator for me of seeing that, is actually to look at how people invest in African women. All too often, people invest in our vulnerabilities. They don't invest in our strength. I'd love to see AWDF 
push that further. I want to see AWDF, yes, we have to invest in our emergencies. Yes, we have to invest in issues, but I really want to see how we can move into investing in African women's strength, African women's organizational strength, because when that happens, we're freeing. We're freeing African women, we're freeing the world when we can make that happen. And so for AWDF, some of that is getting resources and using the resources well to support our movements on the continent. Some of it is working with people who think that they're investing in African women's rights and to help those people understand that they can either invest to undermine, invest to maintain a status quo that isn't working for anyone, or invest towards equality, justice, and freedom. And if AWDF can help more people do that, that would be fantastic because other people will always have more money than we do. So we can actually help change the framework. AWDF does a lot already, but we can do so much more. Literally, we are here for it. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. And one last question. It's been really beautiful for me. Uh, to work with you in the past few weeks. Uh, we didn't really know each other before, but I felt like I've grown very close to you and everything that we hear about uh, mentorship and intergenerational dialogues and all of this, it's like been a, a crash course of being in the middle of that. <laughs> I've received so much advice and, uh, and guidance from you. Um, and I, I've been wondering what is the guidance that you wish you'd had? And yeah, the piece of advice that you really want me to remind uh, myself of as I go into uh, the next few years? Ooh, there's so many pieces of advice. <laughs> so many things I wish I had said to myself at the beginning rather than towards the end. Just a couple of them. If I could speak to myself all those years ago, I would say to myself, remember that work is not the world. Yes, we want to change the world as feminists, but we have a greater world to change. Work is not everything. It's really important. And, but if we really want to change the world through our work, we have to look after ourselves and be part of a collective well-being of our movements. Um, and that means time with family, time with friends, time thinking and not just doing. The temptation in these kinds of jobs is to try and make things right for everybody else except yourself. And that doesn't work either. So I wish I'd said to myself, take more time outside of the job. And I think that the other thing, I wish I had known that it can really pay to be brave. <laughs> because sometimes when you're taking actions, which you worry might put your team at risk or might put the organization in a firing line of some kind. It feels very lonely and it feels as if the risk may be more than the return. And actually over the years, what I've come to realize is that it's when we take the risks, it's when we are brave. It's when we fly in the face of people's expectations. That's when the fulfillment comes. And that's when we can see the change. And that's what nourishes you. But that only happens if we do it together. And there's also a danger in these executive director, CEO type roles of people thinking that you will do it on your own or that you have to do it on your own. And I really think that we are stronger when we act together and when we act collectively. And I knew that all those years ago, but I think making it happen and not feeling responsible for everything that goes right or everything that goes wrong. And usually it's feeling responsible for what goes wrong. Um, it's, it's hard to get there. I wish I, 
um, had said, it's important to be more forgiving to, to yourself and to everyone around you. Thank you so much and thank you. I want to say thank you on behalf of really the organization, but really the movement. Uh, I think since my joining this African feminist movement, I've been so inspired by this organization and by you personally, by your wisdom. I'm not going to cry. No. <laughs> by your wisdom and I think what I would say, your kindness and the kindness you put in the, in the way you do the work and that you embody what it looks like uh, to be a real African feminist who does, does the feminist thing in the feminist way. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. If you're interested in the second part of this conversation, that is when Theo asked me a few questions, please stay tuned and we'll be sharing that part at the beginning of 2021. In the meantime, we're wishing you the most beautiful, restful holiday and see you in 2021.